WCBI News at 10 starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Raleigh Livingston. Virginia Beach officials identified the gunmen in the workplace massacre that left 12 people dead and several injured. CBS News' Katherine Johnson has more. Virginia Beach mourned the dead and prayed for the injured as investigators looked for a motive behind Friday's mass shooting. The police chief identified the 40-year-old assailant on Saturday after all 12 victims' families were notified. The suspect, and this will be the only time we will announce his name, it's Dwayne Craddock. Dwayne Craddock worked as an engineer in the city's utilities department for about 15 years. Like everyone in this Oceanside city of nearly half a million people, Craddock's neighbors struggled to understand the atrocity. He was, he'd walk in and walk out, like, uh, very rarely saw him. It just seemed like the average guy to me. You never would look at him and think he would do something like that. The city manager, Dave Hansen, said he worked for years with many of the people gunned down here inside this municipal government complex. The lives of 12 people were cut short by a senseless, incomprehensible act of violence. She Officials on Saturday resident, named the victims, showed their photos, and shared details of their lives. 11 were city employees. The 12th was a contractor applying for a permit. Police said Craddock opened fire indiscriminately using two 45 caliber handguns he legally purchased. He was killed after a long gun battle with responding officers. In the aftermath, bodies were found on all three floors of the building. This is a large scale crime scene. It's a horrific crime scene. The FBI is leading the evidence recovery effort with 40 agents on the case. Katherine Johnson, CBS News, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Authorities have not said if anyone was specifically targeted in the shooting or if the suspect had previously made any threats. Four injured victims remain hospitalized. A person is injured after an early afternoon crash. Witnesses tell us a stopped driver and a cyclist collided on 11th Avenue South. The biker was taken to a local hospital. We'll have more information as it develops. Earlier this year, Aiden Green, a young boy from Montgomery County, was mauled by half a dozen dogs while riding his bike. Today, people from all over the state came together to show their support for Aiden and get an update on his health. Our Cash Matlock has the story. Eddie Britt is not related to Aiden Green, nor did he know him very well before the accident. However, when he heard about a young boy being attacked by a pack of dogs, he knew he had to help. The Lord just laid on my heart to do a fundraiser, and like I said, it's... We was thinking something small, but it got bigger. And here we are at the Montgomery County Coliseum. Britt says Aiden's story struck a chord with him. I have children of my own, and, you know, I just don't never want to just experience this. So, you know, as a parent, you know, you try to help all you can to help because I think we all need to come together to support our community. And plus, parents ought to, you know, help like what they're doing here today. Today's fundraising event featured a little bit of everything, auctions, horse rides, live music, and various other vendors. Coordinators say the event has gone beyond their original expectations. Well, he's showing that um, he does have people supporting him and love him and care for him, you know, just to let him know that, hey, we are here for him. As for Aiden, those that know him say he's on the road to recovery. It's going to be a long, drawn-out process for Aiden. He's got a lot of physical therapy to endure. He's already went undergone several um, skin grafts. And so he's, you know, he's gone, undergone a lot. You know, he is just an amazing little boy, you know, and we're just blessed to have him here. Got word that he is home. Um, he's recovering slowly, but surely. You know, he's going to probably have some therapy, rehabilitation and all that. But he's going to, you know, hopefully he'll be back going again. Aiden has actually uh, stood on his own. You know, he is in a wheelchair. And, you know, hopefully with physical therapy and everything, he will be up and walking before we know it. Event organizers say they want to raise enough money to help with Aiden's medical and travel expenses, as well as lift his spirits. The biggest thing is we just want everyone to know that everything that we've done has been out of love and care for Aiden. Hope we make them feel special that this is about him. Today's his day. This is Aiden Green Day. For information about the Aiden Green fundraiser, you can visit our website at WCBI.com. It's now time to turn things over to meteorologist Jacob Dickey for a first look at our forecast. Jacob, it's been pretty warm this week. 
Yeah, Riley, been warm. Also, overall, been dry. That is looking to change that here soon. Tonight, though, not any problems out there. We do see scattered showers and storms to our west and to our north. I think we get a few folks to see some storms on our Sunday. Temperatures for a lot of us, though, heading into the low to mid 90s out there. Yes, a few storms, but overall, I do think it's going to be an okay day for some baseball yet again out there. As we look ahead, summer weather is here. First day of meteorological summer is today. Some rain is coming. We also watch the tropics. It is the first day of the Atlantic hurricane season. Details and all of that and more coming up in just a bit. Thanks, Jacob. For the third year, residents of Saltillo got a chance to meet members of the law enforcement and public safety community up close and personal. This care flight helicopter from North Mississippi Medical Center was a popular attraction. At the Touch a Police Car event at the city park, there were also representatives from other area agencies, including the Saltillo Police and Fire Department and the Lee County Sheriff's Office. Saltillo Police Public Relations Officer DeAndre Poole was the event organizer. Well, we wanted to create the, the kind of event that bridged the gap between law enforcement and our community. Oftentimes, we deal with them on the criminal side, and so we wanted to create an event where they can get up close and personal with us in a relaxed environment and understand that we're not just here to lock up bad guys, but we're also here to protect them and, and encourage them as well. Poole says in the first year, 700 people showed up, and that increased to 3,000 last year. He says they expect to shatter the attendance record this year. The event also gives young children the chance to see if they would like to become public service officers themselves when they grow up. We all know the saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. The second annual Lemonade Day kicked off throughout the Golden Triangle. The event lets kids be their own boss for a day. Our Stephanie Poole got a taste of what the kids went through to bring us the story. Throughout the Golden Triangle, 94 lemonade stands are lining up to give out a sweet treat. But this isn't a coincidence. It's the second annual Lemonade Day. Worked on this together for the whole week. Jake Gamble, along with other future entrepreneurs, signed up to participate. Director of MSU Outreach College of Business Jeffrey Rupp says Lemonade Day is designed to teach a real-world experience operating a business and financial literacy. And we tell the kids to do three things with the money. Spend some because you work for it. Save some because that's smart. And share some. And that's what they did. Spend it, save it, and share it. Jade and Claire Everett participated last year. She says her profit allowed her to take a trip. I had enough money to go to Paris. Kenia Lucia says some of her earnings will go to charity. I'm donating some to church, to St. Jude's Hospital. I'm keeping some. And Taylor Rice is already thinking ahead for his future. Save it for college. But it wouldn't be possible without community support. Even with different flavors of lemonade and homemade treats, it all comes down to the customers. But it's bigger than that. This doesn't work unless the community gets out and supports it. And that's what's overwhelming. Some of these kids last year made over $500 at these little stands, and th that wouldn't have happened without the community support. <laughs> Last year, Lemonade Day was only in Starkville. This year, it expanded its reach and covered the entire Golden Triangle. A local organization is encouraging men to take charge of their health. We'll have more on that coming up next. Welcome back. Men are sometimes stubborn when it comes to taking care of their health. So today's event in Tupelo was designed to encourage men to be serious about early detection and screenings. WCBI's Chad Groening has the story. They ran or walked. This man rode his bike and some worked on the stationary bike. It was all part of the men's health awareness walk run at Tupelo's Robbins Field, sponsored by Wear It Well. Wear It Well is an organization that was established to enhance lives by renewing the mind, body, and soul of individuals facing difficulties, cancer, or life-altering experiences. It includes men, women, and children, regardless of race, color, or creed. Davis Holland says this event was important, considering how poor health statistics are in the Magnolia State. Yeah, compared to the national average, you know, we all know Mississippi as a whole, we, we kind of lack in the fitness and health uh, area. So Tupelo, it's lacking somewhat. Most of the contributing factors is the way we eat. You know, we were raised to eat, you know, pork and all these unhealthy and greasy foods uh, because that's w what we were accustomed to, you know, from way back. But uh, th that's the most uh, rampant one, I would say, is the food. Stationary bikes have been a popular way to stay fit for years. And Vince McNary, owner of Pedal Life Cycles, says there are advantages to riding an indoor cycle to get in shape. 
indoor cycling, you're led, it's like an aerobic class. You're led by an, an instructor, which rides at the front of the class, and they give you different commands on how to ride a bike to gain maximum cardio uh, and get and burn maximum calories. So on a regular bike, you're relying on yourself and the, the terrain that you're riding on to give you that um, that burn. In our, in our studio, we have this knob on our bike where we can engage, turn up the tension, so it feels more like you're going up a hill or up a slope or an incline, which allows you to push harder, work harder, and burn more calories as well. And this weekend's event also gave participants the chance to have their vital signs checked. Registered nurse Bridget Herford Allen says men need to understand how important it is to monitor things like blood pressure and their prostate. Sometimes with the uh, male species, uh, it is uh, kind of uh, hard for them to go to see their regular doctor on a regular basis. So we are here to help promote that and to let them know the benefit of early detection of medical issues. Are you saying that the men are stubborn and just don't want to go to the doctor? Is that what you're saying? That's it in a nutshell. These men at least know their numbers. Chad Groening, WCBI News, Chupalo. Organizers of today's event says June is the month to celebrate the men in our lives and encourage them to be responsible for their own health. Well, we've got more rain in the forecast here. Maybe some of the highest rain totals we've seen over the past couple of weeks or so. Two to three inches is on the way. I'll tell you when the rain will fall and whether or not it will end. Those details after the break. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Across the region tonight, things are calm and cooling off. We're seeing a mostly clear sky on our Alpha Insurance Sky Chem Network this evening. Temperatures are down into the 70s in a lot of spots. In fact, we're at 70 right now in Columbus. Our dew points have come up a bit. We're at 65 now at the latest reading. Down to 68 for a temperature in Amory, 70 in Starkville. Winona at 73. We're at 78 in Aliceville. Those temperatures will continue to cool down into the generally, I think, mid-60s across the region. I've got us down to 65 in Columbus, West Point, and in Starkville. 63 in Yapura, 66 in Calhoun City. We'll drop to 68 overnight tonight in Pontotoc with generally calm winds and a mostly clear sky. Lemonade day was today. Here is Joy in a Jar in Starkville. They sold lots of lemonade with all of that heat out there. Madeline, Ava, Ari, and Kaylee out there had a great time, I'm sure, selling more lemonade weather tomorrow for us. Temperatures climbing into the low 90s out there. There is a chance that some of us will see some scattered storms with northwest winds generally between 2 and 7 miles an hour through the day. Notice here by 3 o'clock on Sunday, Futurecast says a few scattered showers and storms in the northern part of our area along and northwest of, of Tupelo on Interstate 22. Those will generally slide to the south and the east through the late afternoon and evening hours. Once we get to about 8 o'clock, the sun sets, the heating of the day goes away. I think most of the showers and storms will begin to fizzle off. I will not rule out a stray shower. Hour or storm bell through about midnight, though, on Sunday night into early Monday morning. Temperatures, though, again, with the chance for storms in the Tupelo region, we're still, though, getting into the low 90s. I've got 91 in Tupelo and 91 in Houston, Pontotoc, and New Albany at 90. We'll see 90 also in Water Valley. Lesser chance of storms, I think, more dry into the Golden Triangle. 93 in Columbus, 94 in West Point, 91 in Monona. We'll get to 92 in Ackerman. And then West Alabama. Can't rule out a stray shower here, but again, those better odds to our north and to our west. 91 in Sillingen and in Vernon, 92 in Reform and in Aliceville. Now, as we look ahead over the next seven days here, rain potential is between two and three inches. It's been a while since we've seen our rain potential be this high. I think one of the big players going on here is actually a tropical wave off to our south in the Bay of Campeche. This will slowly organize and move off to the north and to the west, has a 60% chance of development over the next 48 hours. If it does develop, it could become Tropical Storm Barry. That, combined with this high pressure and an upper level system coming in later on this week, I think will swing that moisture in here and fill in with showers and storms. Could be more numerous to perhaps widespread at times here. Because of that, I've brought the chance for rain up as we go into Thursday, Friday, and on Saturday. I've also cooled those temperatures just a little bit. For now, we'll call it numerous showers and storms, but we'll keep you updated with what that tropical moisture does into our region later this week. EBI Sports coverage of the NCAA Baseball Regionals is brought to you in part by Columbus Orthopedic Clinic and Outpatient Center. Bank First, a better way to bank. And visit Columbus, the city that has it all. Welcome back to the winner's bracket. Mississippi State in game two of the Starkville Regional this evening. And the question coming into today, could state's pitching keep a determined Central Michigan team at bay? The answer, yes. Just put in Ethan Small, that's exactly what state head coach Chris Limonis did. And Small delivered, putting away 10 Chippewas in his six innings pitching. And as to what the Diamond Dogs offense did, well, let's get to the highlights. 
It would be Jake Mangum firing up the crowd before the first pitch. The new dude filled to the brim for winner's bracket baseball. It'd be the return of the Mac in the four spot. Elijah McNamee drops one fair on the first baseline. Jordan Westberg comes home to score. And Tanner Allen would round third. He scores. Mac would get greedy, thrown out at second. But no matter, Rowdy Jordan staying red hot. Base hit brings home Justin Foscu. And State now rocking a 3 to nothing lead. We're still in the first inning. Josh Hatcher with a chopper into right field. That'll be a base hit, and Dustin Skelton scores. It'd be 4 nothing after just one for the Bulldogs. A four-run lead, just enough for Ethan Small. He would be dealing out them strikeouts. Five strikeouts through two innings. He comes the third pitcher in MSU history to record over 300 Ks with 302 career strikeouts. And the Bulldogs piling it on early and often. Jordan again, an RBI double for Rowdy. Bulldogs with 13 hits in three innings. And the Diamond Dogs hang on to lead to survive and advance for another day. 7-2 is your final this evening from Starkville. We'll have more from that Starkville matchup coming up later in sports. But we head to LSU for the Baton Rouge Regional. Southern Miss taking on the Tigers. Southern Miss down by 1K. Beloso hits a low fly ball to the left. That's enough for Brant Broussard to score. And so the Tigers are up 2-0. It would be 4-0 in the seventh inning. In the bottom of the seventh, Golden Eagles have the bases loaded with no outs. Two strikes for Matthew Guidry. He hits this one deep to left. Ladies and gentlemen, in baseball, that is what you call a grand slam. USM ties this one up with one swing of the bat. But that would not last for much longer. LSU regains the lead in the top of the eighth. They get the bases loaded, and Sol Garza hits a long grounder pass short to score a run, and LSU goes on to get the win 8-4. USM will play Arizona State at 2 p.m. tomorrow with the hopes of staying alive. Well, from one winner's bracket to the next, Ole Miss taking on Clemson in the Oxford Regional. We'll have a recap of tonight's game as well as that more I was talking about from State coming up next in sports. Stay with us. Let's rewind for a second. MSU with another great performance this evening. And luckily for us, WCBI Sports' Tom Ebel was there to catch all the action and joins us live from Starkville with more. Hey, Tom. Courtney, there's a reason why regular season success is so important when it comes to postseason play. It's to get home field advantage in the NCAA tournament. And Mississippi State took complete advantage of that. 11,000 511 people packing due to Noble Field. That is an NCAA tournament record for here in Starkville. And they made the most of it. Right off the bat, four run first inning. That was the key to the ball game. Once you had Ethan Small on the mound, he hasn't given up more than three runs all year long. That's your key to your ball game. Another massful night from Small and 16 hits from the Bulldogs. A lot of the guys saying after the game that the emotion from the get go is what drove them to a win. I mean, really, that, that's just me growing as a player and just being really competitive. And even if I don't have my best of, it's just fighting to really just help the team win the game. I mean, that's what it comes down to. It's not about the draft or the punch outs. It's never been about that. It's been about being thankful for the opportunity to go out there and just making the most of it. First inning, I told Rowdy when I got back in the dugout, I'm like, dude, you're going to step in the box and your feet are going to be shaking. It's so loud. And he started laughing, but I was right, man. This, this atmosphere in this place is unbelievable. And when you get a lead and play with a lead like we did, it, it's something special. We knew in the scouting report, this guy, he had great numbers for the year, but he was a slow starter. And we felt like with the crowd, the atmosphere, um, we talked about it before the game, our best opportunity may be in the first, and it actually was. Mississippi State in the best seat you can be in an NCAA regional. They're now 2-0. and They will advance to the winner's bracket. Tomorrow at 8 p.m., they'll await the winner of Miami and Central Michigan in the elimination game earlier tomorrow. Peyton Plumley will take the mound for Mississippi State in the late game as the Bulldogs will look to wrap it up and take home a Starkville Regional Championship and advance to a Super Regional. Reporting here outside Duty Noble Field, Tom Ebel for WCBI Sports. Courtney will send it back to you in Columbus. Well, thank you, Tom, but MSU not the only team playing tonight. Ole Miss as well, and a 16-2 victory would be hard 
for Ole Miss to replicate in day two of the Oxford Regional, especially against a team like Clemson. The Tigers had almost an equally dominating performance over the Illini Friday, which landed both in the winner's bracket today, but only one of them tonight could come out on top. And to see that, we had to Oxford. It's Tigers versus the Rebels at Swayze Field this evening. Ryan Olenek with the low line drive to right. Olenek is safe at first, and the runners now on first and third, although we got a bit of a frozen video, so I'll just talk you through what was happening and see if we can get it rolling. Greg Kessinger with the sack fly to center, and Thomas Sillard scores to give the Rebels a 5-0 lead, but Briar Hawkins hits the one to Kessinger, and Ole Miss makes the double play, but Grayson Bird gets the Tigers on the board. Kevin Graham helping to seal the deal for the Rebels this evening. He hits a solo shot to center, his 10th homer of the season, and Ole Miss gets it done with a huge help from Doug Nikhazy's pitching. He almost completed an entire game, but had to step out in the ninth, and to that, we send it to Ole Miss to talk to us after the game. It was really incredible to see how, how great our fans were tonight and how great they responded to, like, the way we played tonight was just fantastic, and I was just really happy with the way I pitched. This is why you want to win this game for all the reasons that we all know. Um, but then you got to go out and play it. You got to go out and play well. And, uh, you know, we're excited. I think we're more excited that we're playing well. Uh, and we've played well here for, for a while now, uh, not just this weekend, but last weekend. And to continue to do that, I think that, that means more than arms in the bullpen and rest and all of those things. That's it for Sports The Last look at your weather is after the break. Stay with us. Today is the first day of meteorological summer, marked by the months of June, July, and August. Also the first day of the Atlantic hurricane season. So Ooh. tropical moisture may add some rain to the forecast as we get Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It could be because of what we call tropical storm. Barry, we'll keep you updated as well through the day of month. And I'm not so excited about these hurricane season coming yeah, up. Yeah, I can't get a can't get a break. I hope everyone has a great night.